Welcome to episode 65 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg, and this week's guest is David Chartier from the Finder, uh, Finder Tech website. How are you doing, David? Doing really good, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I've been wanting to have you come on the show for quite a long time. I'm so glad we were able to get uh, caught up here and get you on the show uh, this week. Uh we uh, uh, we have lots of great topics I've got uh, lined up for us this week, including uh, your. Uh, we, I'll give, I'm going to be giving my first impressions of the Apple Card, which I talked about last week. I don't know you'll have some uh, maybe have some thoughts on that as well. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, also, I, as I always do with new guests, I always have you uh, tell us what iOS tech you have in your bag. So that's always a, always as my my one thing I do when anytime a new, a new person comes on the show. And as well as um, we're going to talk about uh, all kinds of other things, uh, including a story I have about my iPad and me losing it. But there's a there's, oh no there's a there's a there's a happy ending to it, um, oh a, as well as uh, some other new stuff that just has just come out uh, and we're going to be talking about as well. So uh, with that, let's uh, we can just dig right into the news. Um, I have uh, about four, I've got a couple of new stories that caught my eye. Uh, on nine to five Mac, there was a a story that uh, Spotify is reportedly in talks with Apple to integrate to Siri for playback control in iOS thirteen. Found that to be interesting because I know Apple and Spotify have always been kind of at odds with each other with their music services. Um, but uh, it looks like uh, the, the plan is, they say quote unquote plan is that they're going to allow Siri to uh, play songs, playlists, and albums with voice commands instead of having to do it third party or uh, doing it with shortcuts, of course. Um, what do you think of that? That This is really interesting to me because the way they're doing it is by using that that siri kit framework right. that that yeah. apple's released yeah, okay. so do, do you think it might be useful to sort of like briefly cover what that is and why it's yeah. important yeah go for it so siri kit you know the reason why a lot of apps now work with siri is because apple built this sort of framework or this bridge for them to do so yeah and so they've been rolling it out in typical apple fashion they rolled it out for initially for like a certain handful of types of apps like task managers mm -hmm. and i think like ride sharing apps because it's hard to build this stuff, and they want to, you know, try and and do it right. So, the first year they rolled this out, I th I want to say it was iOS 11, the first batch of apps, and then they rolled out an another set last year, mm -hmm. and now they have a third set this year. And what that set, one of the types of apps in that set finally is going to be media apps yeah. like Spotify okay. and okay. podcast players and things like that. That's great. So, it's it's a platform. You know, Apple builds platforms, right? So. Mm -hmm. They're building the support. They're saying, yes, this year media apps can do this. So I'm a little confused and on, on why Spotify and Apple have to like work <laughs> together or make an agreement or something. Yeah. Um, well, again, I don't know if this is rumor or not, but it says reportedly. So, But if 9 to 5 Mac is reporting on it, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty solid report from them. And I wonder if it could just be you know Spotify trying to get out ahead of the news and, and build some hype for that because, of course, could they've be. been making – They've been making some noise over the last year or so about how yeah. making the argument that it's a little anti competitive that only iTunes can do things like work with the home pod and and Siri. So I can see a little bit of their frustration, but the platform is is finally going to allow for this stuff. So it sounds like it should be coming pretty soon when iOS thirteen ships. Yeah. So yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, with Spotify. Um, and uh, you know, stay tuned. I guess when the iOS 13 can, and iPadOS comes out. We'll see what happens uh, well, when the, when that happens. So, uh, next story I had was uh, there's new Apple Maps that were released uh, out to, uh, to to the Northeast uh, U.S. Uh, and uh, Apple is promising to complete a, uh, its U.S. rollout of uh, new map data by the end of this year, with other countries to follow in 2020. Um, so. Uh, Apple did announce about a year ago they were they were going to make a huge change. Apple Maps they really needed it because uh, they needed a lot of updates and new features, um, and there are going to be a, new, a bunch of new features in iOS 13. But rather than going through and you know, uh, having to come up with all this stuff, they're just going to start rolling out the data uh, a, a, as it goes here uh, with all the different states and um, and all that stuff. Uh, what did you think about this? This is really interesting, and I'm I'm glad Apple has stuck with this project because yeah. early on, when I uh, when I was working in in tech news and covering this type of thing a little more closely, mm -hmm. I learned a little bit about the way Maps data works, okay. and 
back then there were only like two or three companies in the world that were trying to build actual global sets mm. of map data yeah, yeah. because just the resources and the time and the money needed to do that is is unimaginable and right. so if i remember right at the time it was like google and then like maybe garmin or uh, tom tom maybe or or tom tom yeah like there's a whole bunch of names that you might associate with mapping technology like Garmin and all those others, but yeah. a whole bunch of them were basically just leasing each other's data. Like there really were only a couple of companies that were making this stuff and because of the the complexity of it. And so I was actually a little worried for a while that Apple yeah. might just, I mean, throw in the towel and like just stick with third party data, which, yeah. been, you know, know as we've all seen, yeah, it's it's had mixed results in Apple Maps. So I'm I'm really happy to see this. I hope they can keep rolling it out to the rest of the world because I feel like Apple Maps is kind of slowly recovering its its reputation. I think do it you is. get that sense of all, at all? Yeah, I do. Okay. And and also, you know, come on, they got they got to pay for all those vans that were driving around doing all the map data. So uh, so because I saw plenty, yeah. I saw plenty of those around our our area. So, uh, but. Yeah, I, I I think it's starting to come. It's coming back. I mean, I I don't even think people even remember when Steve um, Steve when uh, Tim Cook uh, had an open letter saying, you know, we really messed up and uh, the maps need to get better. Um, I think people yeah, pretty yeah. much pretty much have forgotten that because, gosh, that's got to be at least four or five years ago at this point. I think. Um, yep. Uh, so and that's and that's also something that's a little difficult for Apple to keep a secret, considering, like you mentioned, they have to drive vans around with, right. you know, Apple written on the side. So <laughs> yeah, they can't, they can't be <laughs> private. So, um, yeah. So, uh, next article I found, um, this is on life hacker. Actually. Uh, this was, um, these dummy iOS lightning cables that hackers remotely access your devices. And I want to emphasize the word dummy. Don't, don't buy crappy cables. <laughs> buy <laughs> Apple certified cables, please. And that's really what that what's what this really comes down to. People buying, you know, buying those two dollar cables you see at the the, the local drugstore on on the side counter before you're checking out, and you plug these cables in, and, and, and lo and behold, yeah, these are these are cables that can uh, put some viruses and put, cause problems with your device, and and then you connect it to your PC or your Mac, and then you cause more problems. What do you think about this? And this this can probably become its its own show because yeah, no. it's. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of advice going around about stuff like this. Like, one, um, Amazon counterfeit products are becoming a problem on Amazon. Yeah, you know, is. these these third-party stores will set up and say, yeah, we're really certified Apple cables, we super-duper promise, but then it's, it's junk like this, you know. Yeah. And being in public spaces, like, I hear a lot of advice going around from security people and hardware people, like, don't. Don't plug into those USB device uh, slots for charging your phone in like coffee shops and stuff. Like it's really convenient and it's nice that they're showing up, but you don't really have a way of knowing what's on the other end of those things. Yeah. So um, even even like if you know the store owners, you know they might have no idea what somebody yeah. plugged into that. You know, kind of like those credit card scammers on a gas station. Exactly. Like if you're not looking for it, you easily won't see it's there. Well, and, uh, and if you read a little further in this article, it's uh, they're called O.MG cables, and they were being circulated at the recent DEF CON hacker convention. How convenient! I, I, I would I would keep wow. all my I would keep all my devices locked up and and uh, far away from if I was even going to spend any time in that convention. And he said, and yep. it says that they're on otherwise normal looking cables, lightning cables, but they're modded for extra hardware, so you can give hackers remote access to your PC and your iOS devices <laughs> when they're plugged in. Yep. What a, what a concept! Again. This, the story says, dummy, don't buy crappy cables. Buy Apple authenticated certified ones, please. Um, I think that's that's a good enough of a public service announcement, don't you think? <laughs> so when, when we say Apple certified, would you consider like third party, you know, known companies like Logitech Cables or Belkin or uh, whoever? An- Anchor. I mean. Companies like that. You know, they, oh yeah, Anchor. They uh, they have they have the certified. They're allowed to use the certified icon. I mean, I you know these companies are not allowed to use that, I and mean, I know they may they may anyway. But uh, it it's uh, it's uh, definitely possible that uh, they could slip it through. I agree with you. But uh, all else fails, go to Apple.com, <laughs> buy the, buy the real yeah. ones. I mean, that's that's your really, safest option for sure. I mean, the safest option. You know what? You're paying a couple extra bucks, but you're safe. Um, then the last story we had here, and this actually came out to, uh, today, um, this was, uh, at and T-Mobile will now uh, verify phone calls between their networks. 
That's called a uh, called verification feature is based on the shake and stir framework. And I'm not, I wasn't even familiar with this protocol. Uh, and I guess <laughs> the FCC has, uh, has been championing this for a while now. And this is going to be a way of being able to filter out even more of these robocalls. And my gosh, I mean, I've been getting like I mean, T-Mobile. I mean, I'm a, I'm a T-Mobile customer, very happy T-Mobile customer, as mo- most of the listeners know. I've talked about that many times. Uh, that I they, I got got called them up. I said, hey, I want I want all these bl- calls blocked. But what can you guys do? And so they put a block in place, and I hadn't gotten anything at all. It was beautiful. All of a sudden, last oh. in, the, in the last week, I, I, these 800 number calls were slipping through. And they're saying my social Ugh. security is my my social security number has been suspended and I've been I'm not oh, going to yeah. get any benefits at all and I'm like are you kidding me and, and as soon as the numbers come up I'm just like I don't want to bother <laughs> I mean the last time they left a voicemail or, or the or the I'm sorry the robocall left the voicemail um, uh, but uh, this is this is a great thing to, to hear um, that they're teaming up at least you know AT T and T Mobile two, two one of the two bigger bigger carriers out there. Uh, T-Mobile Sprint be, will be one as, as soon as, as as we know. So um, I definitely think uh, this is going to help with the robocall problem. 48 billion robocalls last year. That's just insanity. Absolute insanity. Why Why we even have to put it's, up with this? It's a serious problem, especially really since, you know, it works a lot like your email address. You know, if a company gets breached or someone sells their newsletter list and all of a sudden, boom, you're – your contact, your piece of contact information is is out there, and it's up for the highest and lowest bidders. And uh, yeah, exactly. I'm at the point where I just don't answer phone calls anymore. Yeah. If if I don't recognize the number, they can leave a voicemail, sure. and I'm getting easily. I could look at my phone right now, but I'm getting easily anywhere from like five to fifteen spam calls a day. Jeez, easily. Where I just like I double hit the button and just cancel it, and uh, that's something I'm excited about in iOS 13, which yeah. we're going to talk about in a minute. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, companies and governments are finally starting to do something about this, right? Apple has that uh, call screening feature coming, where if they're not in your contacts, you, it doesn't even ring anymore. Yep. And I've I've seen legislation getting it proposed to like really crack down on this stuff and raise the penalties for robocalling and spamming. So they're, uh, they're finally taking notice and, and doing yeah, something about it. Absolutely. So that, uh, that was, uh, in, in, in gadget. Uh, so we'll have all the links to the, the articles we just talked about uh, in the show notes. And with that, let's move on to our topics of the day. And, uh, like I said, that, uh, uh, anybody who was a first time guest of my show, I, I always like to ask uh, them, um, uh, what, uh, what iOS tech do you have? And so I'm, I'm kind of kind of have a feeling you have a few devices that are in your arsenal when it comes to <laughs> iOS. Um, why don't you share with the audience uh, what 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 uh, devices make you tick? Yeah, so I'm I'm one of those odd people who does a lot of my work on the iPad these days. My type awesome. of work, you know, helping you know, I mostly help indie app developers with like content strategy oh, these fine. days. Nice. You know, documentation, blogs, social sure. media strategy. Mm-hmm. And so I work on uh, most of the time on a uh, 12-inch third-gen iPad Pro. Nice. So the the current one that's out right now. Yeah. And I have uh, the iPhone 10s Max. Just like me. <laughs> um, and those are, yep, those are kind of my my pro, my daily drivers, my my go-to devices. I have the pencil. Mm-hmm. Um, do you cover like accessories, oh, yeah. like extra Absolutely. stuff that we usually yeah. use? Apple TV, so, anything at Apple. Well, we don't talk about Mac, but you, you oh, can yeah. mention Mac. But <laughs> so yeah, we definitely have an Apple TV. I've got a fourth gen Apple Watch or a Series Four, yeah. excuse me. Um, <laughs> and uh, I mentioned the Apple Pencil stuff that I use with my devices. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite accessories is a set of. Uh, uh, smartphone camera lenses from Moment. Oh yeah, Have we talked about that. No, that at all on the show. I, no, actually, um, uh, as everybody knows, I'm a president of the Apple User Group local here in Chicago, and one of our our, our members had uh, br- brought it into when I did my last uh, special interest group, and yeah, those things are f- amazing, and I, I, I've heard lots of great things about it. Yeah, you, so you have those? Go ahead, yeah, tell us about that. Yeah. I've got a couple. So I have their wide angle lens and one of their more recent releases called the anamorphic lens. And that one is designed to get you uh, basically that like cinematic HDR look with like lens flares. So it does great. I haven't used it a ton uh, because you got to it's like it's a situational lens like most of them are. Right. But it's 
you can see videos on, on their YouTube or on their website, and of course they'll show off how these lenses work. And the anamorphic lens is meant to get you just that really rich, like color popping video that's super wide. I think it's like 10, uh, 16 by 10 or 16 by mm-hmm. 9, something like that. That's crazy. Um, you know, and it'll really make like any kind of like a street light or store sign like really pop, and you can get some of those lens flares. Mm-hmm. It's a really unique look, and uh, I, I definitely want to play with it more. But the wide angle lens, I love. Okay. Um, and if you can get your hands on them, like as you've seen, like there, it's a heavy chunk of glass. Like you can hurt is. somebody with one of the with one of those things. Uh, so they're they're pretty serious. Their lenses run, I think, around about a hundred bucks, give or take yeah. the lens that you're looking for. Think about what you but put, they're what you uh, they're a the really glass. nice piece of glass. You know, think about the glass you pay yeah. for if you have an Nikon or a Canon. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, oh, exactly, yeah. And, and the cameras just keep getting better and better with these with these um, uh, with these iPhones and the iPhone tennis Max is. <laughs> Oh my God, it's got the best camera ever. Um, and uh, the only thing is you do have to have a special case for that, right? To have those lenses mount. Yeah, so it's it's a blessing and a curse. You right. So the way their system works is you you put on a case and that case has like special little mounting grooves for their lenses around, you know, the camera lenses on your phone. So you need to slap on a case and I usually don't use a case, mm-hmm. but I keep it handy in my backpack. It's not too hard to put on. But the advantage of this is the case is a, you know, it's a typical like twenty, thirty dollar piece of rubber. When a new phone comes out, you don't have to change out all your lenses. You just buy the new case from them because they redesigned the mounts or whatever to fit Apple's, you know, new camera setup on there. Mm-hmm. So you can keep your lenses between phone generations, yep. and you just drop twenty or thirty bucks for a new case, and you, you just keep shooting. There you go. There you go. So that, that that's all you got. You got to have more stuff. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, let's see. Well, yeah. <laughs> It, it's funny like when me. I don't have my backpack here. The, like you know, you, you got to remember you to pull like, stuff out of the back. Oh yeah, I have that. Yeah, I have that, and I have that. We're going to be talking about actually some a couple new accessories and and uh, the, the later a little bit later uh, uh, a new hub that uh, some of our friends at OWC just came out with, and then Apple's uh, adapter. I'm going to talk about and I want to hear your thoughts on this uh, uh, in a few minutes. So, uh, but uh, if anything else stands out, you just iPhone, iPad, Apple TV. You're you're loaded. Watch. It's, you're like me. You got everything. You got. A, do you have a Mac still as well? Yes. Uh, do you still have a Mac? Uh, and now that I think about it, I did just get a notice that's a new kind of keyboard, iPad keyboard case mm. that I backed. Um, oh, kind of like clear today, and it's going to start shipping this month. And I'm I'm trying to look up the name of it. Yeah, if, you, if, um, you, if you remember, yeah, go ahead and throw it in the show notes, go. and we'll uh, we'll we'll put a link out there to everybody. It, uh, yeah, those. There, the, there's so many, so many, so many cool keyboards. Yeah, there hasn't been a lot of good ones lately uh, for yeah iPad. I have I have Apple's um, keyboard folio yeah, for the iPad, too. and yeah, I like know, it as well. well enough. You know, they're all uh, they all have their their pros and cons, right. and you know, I'm not thrilled about like the the limited angles of Apple's keyboard, yeah, but I really do like how light it is. It doesn't make my iPad feel like a giant as heavy as a giant laptop. Um, it is big. I also kind of appreciate that the, the the keyboard is basically waterproof, essentially. I kind of appreciate yep. that. Yep. Not that I get into a lot of trouble with, you know, liquids around my keyboards, but you know, it uh, it doesn't hurt. So the keyboard that I backed is called the Touch Type Pro. Okay. Um, and it was uh, uh, something on Kickstarter and the the concept of it is it's the setup is by itself you you can set the iPad to a few different lengths but when you fold it out uh, it has a place for Apple's actual uh, magic keyboard hmm. okay so you can use their official keyboard or just set the keyboard aside and now you've just got like a you know a keyboard uh, iPad stand excuse me at a few different angles so okay. I wanted to check that out I'm hey, always in search I've- of the the best, you know, another good keyboard. So I've bought a couple things on Kickstarter before, so mostly Mac stuff. But uh, yeah, there's there's always great things to find, and that day never never hurts, and and sometimes comes to life, and sometimes it doesn't. But uh, it's a chance you take. But well, there's a lot of good things on Kickstarter. So um, yeah, I got the iPhone iPhone Tennis Max, as I said to you as well, and I have the i my iPad is the the 11 inch iPad. So I was hesitant to get okay. the larger one. Um, I have a. I still, I just got back my 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 first gen 12.9 inch iPad Pro that I'm using for uh, beta testing, because um, my sister in law I sold it to her after I had uh, because it was, I sold it to her a number of years ago and because uh, I was crazy and I had two iPads, <laughs> so uh, but I said to her hey well, let me get this back so then I can 
do some beta testing because I sure don't want to put it on my my uh, my daily driver. So uh, so I've been uh, running. Oh, beta. that's a good move. Been, been really awesome to be able to run beta. Uh, so we can talk. We we'll talk about iOS 13 and iPad OS here in a bit. Uh, so to do that. So uh, speaking of iPad, um, I have an interesting story that happened to me last week. Uh, you and I both live in the Chicagoland area, so uh, I was at um, Arlington Park Racetrack, and uh, we was uh, for a, a birthday party for my sister, my mother in law. And uh, hanging out and having a fun time. And, of course, the iPad is a great tool to have to be able to look at the programs. And, and also I make the bets on there, too, because I have an account. So. Uh, but, sure. Uh, but um, so I had a great day, and, and, and uh, it was a long day. So it, I decided to uh, go down, and we go, had a nightcap and sat at some tables. And then all of a sudden I re- realized later on that night I got up and forgot to grab the, the iPad with my backpack because it was sitting on the ground at, at, at the track. Like oh boy, Oof. my thousand dollar iPad. So you left it in your backpack. It was in my it in was your in, backpack at the track. It was a I had one of those you know those um, Amazon uh, backpacks that you can crumble up into a ball. The the, the, the oh oh yeah 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 I, that's the backpack I had. So so it wasn't a, it wasn't like one of like one of those substantial backpacks. So so. I, I, later on that night, I realize it. I get in. Uh, I say, "Okay, what am I going to do here?" Okay, find my iPad. There's, there, there's the idea. So I go in to find my iPad, and uh, launch the app. And sure enough, it comes up. It says offline. <laughs> so I'm, I'm panicking oh. at this point. Uh, I'm panicking at this point. I'm going to bring, I bring up my iPad again just to remember what I did. Um, so I tap the iPad, and then I, you, you, there's a couple modes in, in Find My iPhone, I Find My iPad. I think it's going to be called Find My in iOS 13. Um, yeah, and, it's odd. And you can, um, you, you, what you can do is you can, uh, you can do it in, put it in loss mode, and you can do, have it notif- notif- notify you when, uh, when it, uh, it comes available. And you also can put it in there, notify me, and then you put your, your name in there and, and, your, and your mobile number in there. And that's what I did. And then all of a sudden, it came to life after i did that and within oh. within two minutes i got a call from the security uh, the desk at arlington park they said uh yeah we got your ipad here because <laughs> it was beeping like crazy at them because it makes those really loud son- sonar tones <laughs> so I oh said, yeah so i said yeah i think i'm gonna come over right now and come grab it because i don't want to wait because <laughs> the next day was the arlington million which was one of the big races of the day uh the, and i knew it was gonna be crazy busy there so i didn't want to even deal with that so went there got it and voila my my luck in my day was uh was was fulfilled i, I won a few races and, and then i got my ipad back <laughs> so moral of the story is those are that's my find my iphone is your friend <laughs> yeah and that that's my favorite kind of lost ipad story is when yeah. you actually get it back so yeah so very happy very and and, and like i said to, why i wanted to bring that up but like i said Make sure you have Find My iPhone, Find My iPad, and, uh, and your watch yep. too. You can your watch will be turned on as well, and you can find your watch, even your AirPods. I mean, not the AirPods don't work as well with it, but uh, uh, all the rest of your devices, especially the most expensive ones, have them all enabled because you will you'll never regret it later. Um, then the next story I had was uh, this was part kind of part two from last week's uh, show uh, with uh, Adam Christensen. Uh, we talked about the uh, that I, I had just got approved for the Apple Card, and um, you know I don't know if you applied for this or not, David. Uh, um, the, I did. You did. I did. I just got it a couple days ago too. Oh, you did. Okay, great. Then we can really talk about this. Awesome. So, um, so what happened was I put in both my my Gmail account, which is the account I only use for my apps, my App Store apps and payments and all that stuff, and then I have my iCloud uh, email that my iPhone is uh, signed into to do backups and then of course with my wallet and everything is on that account. So what I did was I, I got the email for my Gmail account and then dummy me not realizing this, I applied for it and of course got it. And, and I, and I looked at myself and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, uh, I can't do this on my iPhone because it's signed into the other account. So I do this on the iPad, my b- iPad beta on there. So you can, you can't apply th- uh, to it through there, just going to, to the uh, wallet in the settings. So it, so it's, uh, it approved, but, there's no way I could do anything with it because I can't sign into my iPhone unless unless I want my, all my backups and all my stuff gone. Um, so that was all a long story I talked about last week. Uh, and uh, on the phone with Apple, I was on the phone with Goldman Sachs. I was in, through chat. I said, nah, I just give up. Just close the account. And then when, when I get an email th- for, for my other one, I'll just go ahead and apply for it and uh, be done with it. So then what happened was a couple days ago, I um, went into the, uh, the wallet again just 
try it again, push plus, and sure enough, it came right up, and there was the same limit, the same, the same everything, and uh, uh, now I got the account that I needed and wanted. Um, uh, meanwhile, they had already sent the card. Oh, good. <laughs> from the other account, <laughs> so now I have a souvenir. <laughs> I have, now have two cards. One I can <laughs> one I can play with and throw around and. In fact, I just put something on Facebook. I, I, I just recorded a five second. I dropped it. It's metal. <laughs> and it just dings. Because I don't know if you got you your know, car- card yet or not. But I haven't gotten the physical card yet. But this makes me wonder, you know, when you, you have a credit card that you're done with, you close it out or you, you replace it because you need a, uh, an updated one with a later expiration date. Yeah. You usually like you can cut them in half or yeah. tear them up or not, shred them or whatever. Not this one. I don't How? Th- would dare put this in my shredder. <laughs> Yeah, how how are people going to do that with these? Uh, exactly. I mean, I after I dropped it, I'm like, you know, because they're they're made of titanium. I was like, holy cow, this is metal. Um, I don't care. But the best part about the Apple card is there's no account number on it. There's no. I mean, yeah, it's got the chip and the and, and the uh, stripe, but but your, the account's closed. So as soon as someone attempts to use it, it's going to be denied. So interesting. Yeah. So so I've got so that it, card. The card. So I see in the wallet app that it has an expiration date because right. you know all credit card of like course. payment systems mm-hmm. still need one of those. I wonder if the physical version just doesn't expire. I think it's linked because it, it's sort of meant to be a backup. It's linked. Right? To it. No, it is linked to it. So then, I mean, I'm not sure. They may be able just to program the card so it, you know it whatever the account is set at. That's a good question. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. So because it's you know the card's not going to expire until 2024. So. Um, it'd be interesting yeah. to know if, yeah, once it expires, is that card still going to be good or are they going to send you a new one? That's an interesting question. I yeah. Think. Like I'm, I'm, I'm perplexed. now I want to know, like, can the phone, can the phone and the card like kind of talk to each other? Cause you're right. Like maybe, you maybe the think. app can just update, you know, the circuitry in there or whatever. And, uh, you just keep that card once, you know, 2024 comes around and yeah. you quote unquote renew your card. Maybe it just updates the physical version. Yeah. You would think. So right now, if I'm in the wallet app, and I'm sure yours says the same thing. Your card has shipped and should arrive soon. Um, and then what's going to end up happening is once the card comes in, and of course, I've got the sneak peek already because I got the other one. It's in this beautiful folio, and that was in a plain wrapper that was that was sent by FedEx, by the way. Uh, and you open, of course, the beautiful Apple logo on the front. You flip it up, and then the card is sitting in this nice little slot, which is really nice. And then all you have to do is you tap uh, activate card, which will, which will show up on the um, – on the on the wallet app uh, and then it's got an rfid inside that cardboard that the card is in there you just hover right over it boom it's, the card's activated and then you take it out hmm. ready, ready to rock um so what i did was i, I actually so I, I made a purchase actually on from owc which we're going to talk about in a minute um and of course they don't have apple pay as of yet so what i did was i go into the account i got the account number and uh Enter that information into you know as a as a credit card to, to use as a purchasing uh, credit card, and you know you got the the three digit code and the expiration date all that and worked like a champ. It was it was great. And then uh, then today they already have like you can make a payment. I wanted I wanted to try that today. So then I did, what I did was I just tapped for payment and it paid it. And you actually can you can have it set so like if you wanted you want the Apple Cash card have money in in, in that uh, on that card you can tell it to just take the take the cash from there if you so if you so choose or, or you've got a, a bank account linked to it so um, but I, I I was really pleased uh, how the process works so far um, and I think it's going to be a cool card is it something you're going to make probably much on and probably not I mean kind of cool that the daily cash gets paid to you every day and every, every time you charge something the next day you're going to get the cash back on it with you don't have to wait for it yeah you know but three percent is only on certain items you know if, you, if you're if you're going to like restaurants you get like two percent uh, but like other world computing was only like one percent so so i won't get much on that but of course when you shop at apple and other places that are that do have three percent uh you'll get you'll get a good thing so again it's not for everybody and there's been lots of uh Lots of uh, videos and people reviewing it and, and all that fun stuff, and I don't think it's uh, going to be anything crazy. Um, it's just another credit card, but but it's a cool credit card because it's in your wallet and it's built in Apple Pay. I think at the end of the day, one of the really nice aspects about it is a lot of those little details that, yeah, that exactly. Apple is often known for, and the experience is just fantastic. And I it don't was. just mean the unboxing part, but the, the wallet app is, mm-hmm. is very clear. Sure it's is. very easy to look at your transactions. Yep. See, you can see how much of your payment is going to go to interest. Like they're very, they're changing. I think a lot about banking 
They really are. And how, how banking works. You know, um, it's easy. You can just contact customer support and chat with them right within the wallet app. You know, they don't, they're not hiding from you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. basically. Uh, you know, like, like some banks maybe said to do. Uh, <laughs> it, so it's, it's those little things that I think help a lot and are, are pretty attractive. And, yeah. of course, the daily cash, like you mentioned, yeah. that I think that may be pretty powerful it's for fabulous. more people than we think. You know, getting that money back right away. It's awesome. You know, that's um that could be that could be pretty powerful. I think uh, it will be. I think it will be. It's so I'm, I'm curious. I've made a couple uh, uh transactions on it. I haven't made any mm-hmm. payments yet. Yep. But uh oh, yeah, and just putting simple like budgeting and like transaction visualization tools in people's hands. Mm-hmm. Uh have you used many banking apps? Um well, for like consumer bank apps? I mean, I use Chase, I use Citibank. I, I've used the many of a couple of those Ally. Um, but they don't have a lot of tools. I mean, are you talking about something like Mint or something like that? Or, or yeah, or speaking, yeah. Speaking, we, speaking, specific. I've been with banks? a number of. I've been with a number of banks moving from Denver to Chicago, and yeah. they're they're terrible. They're, in my opinion, they're just awful. Not and great. the only bank that I've found that offers any kind of like transaction review, budgeting analysis, any kind of stuff is PNC, our current bank. Okay. And the tools are okay. You know, they're not, yeah. I would say they're not even on the quality of, of Mint and definitely not on like Apple's design quality. And right. so just that, putting those kinds of tools in, in everybody's hands, I think is really powerful. No, I agree. I agree. So no, I, I think it's going to be a, a game changer. It is really going to be. These banks really have to start stepping up and uh, and saying, hey, we got to... Uh, we got to get uh, uh, we got to get this this more advanced than really what it is. I mean, yeah, I mean they've got great things with their apps and the mobile apps and you know Quick Pay and all this other stuff. But um, I think this is going to be uh, this is going to put them on their toes because a lot of these banks don't. I mean, I have a credit union. I think the credit unions have the worst of all of them. I, that's why I won't even I try not to do any business with credit <clears> unions because they just they're, they're not technology savvy at all. Um, so, but I mean, I, the, the big banks I mentioned, like Citibank and Chase, they're, they're staying up there. Bank of America, um, they all have some pretty good apps that are out there. But, but I think that this actually with Apple so is good too. Actually, I'm going to offer one more example because I know we want to move on. But we have an account with Bank of America, and I'm going to push back on you a little bit there because sure. uh, Bank of America's app will not allow me to put in a payment method to pay a credit card that we have there. Really? I have to go to a desktop computer and open a browser and visit their website and do it there. Well, that's crazy. That, to me, you know, as a person who, you know, I, I live on the App Store. App Store's been out for like a, over a decade now, right? It's yeah. it's a thing. Um, that was that was really frustrating to me. <laughs> no, no, I hear you. Uh, I mean, like I said, I just threw up Bank of America out there. I, I, I agree of all the three I just mentioned, they're the worst. <laughs> Hands down, um, as far as yeah. the, the the functionality of their app. So, but yeah, that's that's the Apple Card story. I think uh, people have you haven't jumped out there and got it yet. Uh, uh, put your name in. Invitations are keep are, are still flying out. Um, hopefully, they'll open it up to everybody soon. If you, but uh, definitely go to Apple's website and uh, you can uh, uh, put your name in to, to be notified. So. Um, Let's move on. Uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit about iOS 13, and, and I, I, I had thought at pre-show we, you, you have had it on your device. I do, of course, as I mentioned earlier on my iPad. Um, what were your thoughts so far? You said you had a few thoughts of where iOS 13 is so far. I've had some time to to play with it. I actually, usually by this time, I would have it on my device. I've been running the betas, especially since they started right. doing public betas these last few years. But when I saw the initial response from people about how it's a little bumpy yeah. this this year, and I think it kind of makes sense because there's a lot of big changes. This is one of those big change years. They're not just polishing yeah. a few oh, things yeah. up. And I said it was. And so, be. yeah, yeah. And so I, I held back a little bit. I'm still waiting. It sounds like the latest ones that came out was it last week? I think. Oh yeah, it's a beta, beta it's six. Beta and six public beta five. Week. Yeah, but the developers have beta six now. Okay. Yep. It sounds like that one overall is like a pretty smooth ride, but they even they pulled a couple of big features from it, like shared iCloud folders and one other one that I don't remember. So, and that happens. I mean, that's why it's a beta. They 
you know, they need time to make some more changes, you know, polish up the code. That's, that's what the beta process is for. So I'm not entirely too, too worried about that, but overall from what I've played with and what is there, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really glad that they split out iPad OS. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's still, of course, of course it's still the same foundation. I mean, it's still iOS, you know, underneath there, but this is, it's, it's a stake in the ground, you yep. know, saying that, yeah, we're we're going to take this more seriously. They're obviously pushing the iPad much farther and doing a lot of things that people have been asking for. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot more heads turning like, oh, you can do that with files now? You can plug in USB drives? Finally. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, lots of those little, like, quality of life core yep. workflow needs that people have. So that, that to me, is really exciting. Yeah. And I've been, I've been kind of itching to at least try it on my iPad, but I'm not as smart yeah, that, as you, and I don't have a, a separate <laughs> beta testing device. Well, um, I got lucky this time. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I like these big, ambitious changes, because Apple usually does a pretty good job of, of yeah. uh, uh, buttoning things up and making a solid release. So I'll if I don't do this beta, I'll probably do the next one. Yeah, the next one. But it's getting close, because usually September is right around the time uh, Apple's going to announce all the new uh, iPhones. Um, but yep. uh, b- believe me, in touch with iOS, we'll be talking all about the new version, and, uh, and I'm going to be getting more in depth uh, as it comes out. Because, like I said, it's beta. We want we want to save it for when everybody has it, because only not only so so many certain people have it, and it's not many of those common listeners out there that have, are are brave enough to dive into the beta world. And then I've always said, if you don't want to have problems with your device, do not install a beta. <laughs> Plain and simple. Yeah. Um, it's it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, for same. sure. Even on the good years, you know. Uh, for sure. All right. So, a couple devices I wanted to mention as discussion. Um, the first one, uh, I don't know if you realize if you knew about this. Um, Apple released a new version of its USB C digital AV multi port dongle, and it now has sixty hertz, four K HDR, and uh, and more. Um, it now allows you to be able to. This, of course, the reason I mentioned this is this is a dongle that can be used with the iPad Pro. Um, it's a new model uh, of adapter, uh, which is A2119, whereas the old one is A1621. I just got it actually today. I ordered one, um, and um, the of course I'm trying to look at the adapter to see how you're gonna know, how you're gonna tell the difference between two because they look exactly the same. Um, and then the print that's on the uh, adapter is, is so faint you could like barely hear it. I had to see it. I had to put a magnifying glass on here as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's gonna have support of HDMI 2.0, which is the newest standard for HDMI. I don't know how, how important is this to you as far as hooking up to displays, things like that. I don't do a lot with 4K yet. I know a few people who who do, but it's mostly for their in-house, like yeah. living room, you know, home theater setup. But there's, I mean, I know there's, prof- you know, road warriors, you know, professional right. presenters, you know, who are using high res, large screens. I, I bet this is going to be a big help, but I don't know if it's going to be that big of a deal to the common like consumer i i really do like i have probably the the old version of this in um in the lightning version for like you know my old ipad and and current iphone because i like one little trick i do anytime we travel i i throw a bunch of you know movies and tv shows on there and this is nothing really new but i'm i'm one of those people so uh i do absolutely have and make use of an adapter like this but i'm not i'm probably not going to rush out and, and get this version because yeah, no. I don't travel really anywhere. Like I don't think any hotel I we visit is going to have a 4K TV anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> so um, in, in the description here, I, I link to the 9 to 5 Mac as a, uh, as a uh, description of this. Um, only way you're going to get, gonna be able to get 60 hertz 4K video on your iOS device is uh, you got to have a 12.4 or later, of course. Um, and it also runs on the Mac. Um, and uh, Max, it's going to be like 2017 and later, so it's only going to be you know last two years of models um, for Max. So that's what that's that's what's so cool about this adapter. It, it's 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 it goes both ways with an, an iPad Pro as well as a Mac. So you can you have one adapter for both. So um, I've always been pleased that they did that uh, when they set that up. So. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, check it out. Uh, if it's something, if you, if you haven't bought one of these yet and you were in the market to get one, well, now you can get, make sure you have the latest and greatest 69 bucks through Apple. Um, I'm sure Amazon will sell for a little cheaper, uh, but you know, you can never have enough dongles, right? <laughs> <laughs> we do live the dongle life now. Yeah. And then uh, also today, um, I was fortunate enough, um, uh, at, uh, 
uh, during some pre-max uh, events um, that uh, we visited uh, OWC, which is other world competing, other world computing based out in Woodstock, Illinois, and they're one of the big Apple vendors that sells all kinds of great stuff. Um, and uh, they released today their new palm-sized uh, five-port USB-C travel dock, which can be used for the Mac, the PC, and the iPad uh, because it has a USB-C uh, connector, and it's got all these uh, all these uh, plugs on here and the other thing that it's got which is really cool is now the cord can now be wrapped to the bottom of the device because i have the old version i have the old version see david you're finding out i buy just i'm crazy i buy all these adapters i just i'm, I'm a bag full of uh, <laughs> dongles and adapters i just keep buying things and crazy um but uh, this uh, the other what they what they added to this new one is like i said the that's the, built-in cable storage now and it does now have a 100-watt pass-through power, faster charging for your notebook and devices. So now you Ooh. plug this thing in, yeah, it's going to charge. So same thing with uh, with your iPad. So you, you have the, that, that availability. Um, it's got a USB 3.1 uh, Type-A. It's got uh, USB-C. It's got HDMI. It's got an SD card reader. And that's another cool thing if you want to have this. If you don't have uh, one of those readers, this is all in one for you, for your for your iPad. So um, check this thing out. It's 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 pretty awesome they were talking about talking it up but i we, we they didn't have one yet i could touch and feel so of course now i'm going to touch and feel it <laughs> um any of these yeah, types these, of devices that you that you would that would interest you you know now that we're we're talking about it in terms of uh, some of the accessories i have i do have a um a smaller version kind of like this from yeah. uh, uh hyper shop sure company that makes a, a few similar things they, they focus on like portable batteries and stuff but it's a really thin USB-C adapter and it's got a few of these ports for like an SD card and USB and stuff uh, it def- definitely will not push that much power Yeah, and it it's small like you know what it won't make up for in power it definitely makes up in, in size but these things are awesome especially if you're traveling and you need this kind of connectivity especially with Apple's laptops because you know, all you have is USB-C now, and maybe right. you don't want to replace uh, some of your old devices, or or maybe you don't want to live the dongle life like we are. Yeah. And I can't blame you. <laughs> um, so yeah, these things are are fantastic. OWC is an amazing company. They've been yeah. around for forever. I was. So I actually impressive. got to. Have you ever have you ever been at, at to their facilities? Because I think we, they do tours. We did the tour. Yeah. I'm sorry. I wish you would have been oh, there. Yeah. You would. You would have had a uh, had a ball. Yeah. It's a great. So it's an absolutely I, awesome. Awesome. Place. If you hadn't already been there. Yeah. So back when I worked at Macworld, uh, and Jason Snell was my managing yeah. editor, sure. um, editor in chief, uh, he came out to do a tour, and he said, "Hey, you're in the area. Why don't we drive out together?" So I got to do a tour. I got to tour the facility with him. That'd be awesome. And this was closer to right after they had finished a lot of the awesome stuff that they have on premises, like mm-hmm. the windmill and the, yep. the yep. parking that like drains water, you know, and all the amazing yep. like geo thermal energy stuff that they do. Mm-hmm. Amazing company, fantastic stuff. Uh, definitely recommended. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a great. It's a great place, and that's what inspired me to to buy it because I, I want to support them too. But of course, I have to have the gadgets. <laughs> so check that <laughs> out. We have that link in the show notes, uh, and one may want to pick one up for um for your I, iPad. But it does work with your Mac too. Um, and then speaking of OWC, I, I I found this amazing visual guide to screen gestures that they they uh, have because they do a they do this great blog called Rocket Yard. And um, they they came up with this. Uh, uh, again, this will be in the show notes. Um, this little this visual guide of of uh, gestures for the home screen on the iPhone and the iPad Pro, the the, uh, the iPhone 10 series and the iPad Pro. Um, and they they've 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 laid it out from A to I here as far as the uh, screen. I don't know if you had a chance to look at this yet, David, but uh, um, yep, this, yep. This, this this is pretty awesome. I mean, and, and to really get a good visual, I, I might even use this for some of my training that I do. So just to show people how, how you can do the gestures. So even when you do the get to the control center, it shows you where to go to the control center, um, the notification center. You know, you can quickly access it by dragging it, uh, dragging down towards the middle, the, the top of the screen. Get to the widgets by going over it from from the left to the right with this uh, with uh, with that. And then the next screen, you, you got the same thing with the uh, going from right to left. And then uh, scrolling recently uh, opened apps, uh, search and series suggestions, all with gestures. And I think this is such an amazing view guide. I was very uh, really super impressed with this. Um, it is. It's it's an impressive guide. I've I've yeah. never seen these instructions laid out quite this simply. 
yeah. and succinctly. So definitely check out the guide. I highly recommend it because if yeah. you can if you can make muscle memory out of it, absolutely. Mm-hmm. These, I, I really like the way iOS feels now in iOS 11 and 12 mm. with the full screen iPhone 10 and 10s design. It's it's just such a great experience, and yes. I feel like not to get too far off the rails, but I no, no. I was at the keynote when when Steve Jobs introduced the original iPhone, no, and he no. he talked a lot about like a touch screen device. You know, you can move these things with your fingers. You're touching the software, and I feel like. This is iOS is in probably the best condition it's ever been in yeah. for that vision. Not to get a little too no, no. talking into the clouds here, but like you can swipe everything like you've been saying. You can just swipe to pull up this panel or move to another page, and it's it's so great if you can uh, uh, commit this to muscle memory. It works really well. Yeah, this that's definitely worth a link and keeping it uh, in your bookmarks. Uh, they even go over gestures for app screens too. So it'll give you the same A to H and, and the, the guides to that too. So check it out, and the, the, that's that's and people understand that, that that's kind of was kind of a tip for us, and as we led led into the tips here for this week, um, and I was I, I was uh, uh, intrigued enough that I I picked some of the tips that you have on your great newsletter on uh, uh, finer things in tech, uh, and uh, I figured the f- uh, uh, the first one here I. Th- think was yours nope the first one wasn't yours so we'll, we'll, we'll get to that uh so the first one is uh we've got some tips here oh yeah actually i'm sorry yes it was quickly switch between uh, two types of apps on your apple watch that was in your, oh yeah yep. that, that was in your newsletter um if you want to if you can remember it <laughs> uh it, it was uh as of series three and especially series throw four you can you can now do a much better job of of uh, task uh switching did you want to uh, talk about that real quick yeah, it's it's really nice, especially on Series Four. I can't speak to Series Three because I didn't own one, but I remember in the early days of the watch, there were complaints about app performance. They took a while to start up; they could be a little bit slow. And I feel like the Series Four is in a great spot. I use a whole bunch of apps on my watch now. I switch between them. Yep. It it really is like a wrist computer at this point, and. It's you know I have a shopping list with any list I use Bear to record stuff. Disclaimer: I also work with them. They're one of my clients. <laughs> um, I use Strava for uh, uh, workouts. I use Carrot Weather. Like I switch between a bunch of these these yeah. apps now, and they open quickly. They're really snappy. It's it's just great. Um, so if you if you haven't used them in a while, if you have a Series Four but I haven't really tried the apps, I definitely recommend it. And the the main tip is that if you if you go to the app screen, you know, the little app like bubble and you open an app, you go back out and then you open another one, you can double click the uh the crown and you can switch between them. Kind of like command tab on a Mac or right. you know, swiping back and forth on a on an iPhone or an or an iPad now. And it's it's a great way, like you said, to to multitask uh on your watch, which is not something I thought I'd be saying this early. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, and then and I can't wait till uh watch OS six with having its own app store and then and, and, and it's gonna it's kind of this is gonna be its way of separating itself from the iphone um so yeah uh, there's gonna yeah be more, it's more kind of it's a uh, it's kind of it's a uh, iphone itunes moment when apple cut uh right. cut that cable yeah but the, remember when you needed oh remember the dark days when you needed yes. itunes to set up your iphone <laughs> i know uh, i can oh. never forget those but that's why we have iMazing now, because iMazing is a great app that you can do, um, and and have to if you can do if you need to do backups, don't even have to have iTunes. I use that that the app I've mentioned that many times. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, great tip on that. Uh, the second tip I had was um, how to turn off auto capitalization words on your iPhone, iPad. You know how much of a pain that is sometimes, uh, where the, the iPhone uh, and iPad are all defaulted to having set uh, it to automatically capitalize a, a, a new word uh, at the, and typing the end of, of each sentence. Uh, but you can turn that off if you so choose. And the way to do that is uh, if you open the settings app in iOS and then you go to the general and then you go to keyboards, then you're going to find one selection in there that says auto capitalization. You just tick the, 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 the toggle button, turn that off. And then you just exit out of the settings, and now it will no longer auto capitalize. If it drives you crazy, sometimes like it does me. Um, but, <laughs> do it, but, but but sometimes people like it. You know, it's. I, I think the auto um, the auto correction is starting to get a little more annoying than than it has in lately. Um, you type one word, and it, then it types an entire sentence for you. If, if nothing <laughs> makes sense of what you're trying to type, so. Um, but hey, 
more power to them that they're trying to, to make it easier to get things corrected. So, um, so that was that tip. And then um, I have another one. This was uh, how to edit your photos geotag in the iPhone, or you can do it on your Mac as well. Um, on the iPhone, it can be it can be a little more challenging. There are some third party apps that out there. Uh, there's a there's a paid app. Um, a couple of them that they're that are suggested is Metafo and the photo, the photo investigator. Interesting. Uh, and both those apps can go in there. And, and what it's talking about is the metadata, being able to go in and actually change uh, your, the location, the information, uh, the exif f- uh, file of a photo. Uh, if you want to be able to do that, um, uh, there's going to be a link in the show notes with this um, to a, to an article on uh, from uh, iPhone Life uh, magazine uh, that uh, has uh, th- these tips here. And then uh, and I also add another tip for another app that I, I can't remember off the top of my head here, but that you also can use to, uh, to to change it. I believe I've talked about it before, but uh, uh, yeah, this is a good way to being able to edit your photos if you want um, your photos geotagging. If you uh, if it is, it's because sometimes it's not correct or you want it to be something different. So. Um, I can uh, I can offer a little extra tip on that. I yeah, own please. and use Metafo, oh, one know. of the, okay, uh, the iOS apps that they recommend. Sure. Metafo is great, and it's it's basically a, a metadata viewer and editor because is photos on on iOS. Okay. A lot of that metadata stuff is one of the things Apple kind of re- took out, you know, in order to get these apps to fit on on mobile. Mm-hmm. I I'd like to see those features there, but until they are, I think Metafo is a great option. Mm-hmm. It can also do stuff like um, it can batch edit photos. I believe it can batch edit the geotags. You yep. can also change a photo's timestamp. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know about other people. That's been a one of the original time. reasons I. Yeah, one of the, the first reasons I looked into Metafo was because uh, I have, like, I scanned in a whole bunch of old, like, family photos. Right. And, you know me, I like to work on iOS when I can. So uh, I wanted to find something that would help me mess with that stuff. And I didn't want to step up to something like Adobe Lightroom. Sure. That's a little more firepower than, than I really need. And uh, Metafo was a nice uh, uh, in-between for me. Yeah. It's only three ninety nine, so that's not too terribly expensive. Um, oh, yeah. I think you've already got me purchased to purchase it right now, Miz. I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it looks. Oh, okay. And I, the other app is uh, Exif. Exif Viewer is one I have too, which is is, is really good. Yeah, Metafo. I think it's in app purchases, so you can buy it and try it uh, before you pay for it. Um, and then, um, uh, then you can, uh, and then you can pay for the. Uh, it's got in app purchase, which is unlock everything for four bucks. I mean, can't beat it. Mm-hmm. Can't beat it. So we'll put all the links in the show notes to those. Um, uh, to those apps to, to make changes to uh, to your photos. Um, so, another tip we've got here is um, is uh, how to enable USB restricted mode uh, to protect the data on your iPhone. You ever notice that uh, whenever you uh, plug in uh, in a plug public place, like let's say you're plugging into a uh, the, into a uh, device to charge something, some something like that, you can you actually can set um, you can actually set your phone so it, do- it doesn't have um, uh, you, it has USB protected mode. So where, the way you do that is if you go into settings and then you go under touch ID and passcode, um, or if it's a 10 or later, it's the face ID and, t- and passcode. Then of course you put your password in, then you scroll down and then there's a choice at the bottom there, USB accessories. You can turn that on or off and you can turn it off if you don't want USB accessories to, to, to plug in uh, and protect it from doing that. So to regain access, all you have to do is unlock your iPhone and go back in there and turn it on. I would hope they would come up with something different, you know. Wouldn't you think? I mean, I know iOS 13. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to have a little bit more control over this because I think an important detail of how this feature works is that it locks the lightning port and it prevents USB accessories from getting any data from your phone after it's been locked for an hour. Yep. So you can't, like... You know, let's say you're you've been using your phone on the way to the coffee shop. You know, and you're on your phone. You walk in, you order a coffee, you sit down. You can't just lock your phone. Right. You you know you can't just turn this feature on, lock your phone, plug in, and, and feel safe. Um, it, you know, there's like a specific condition here, and I wonder I wonder why that you know after an yeah. hour clause is is there. But it is nice to have some of this control. I don't know if there's more in iOS 13. I'd certainly love yeah. it, especially with how much. Uh, emphasis Apple's putting on security and privacy. Right. So we'll we'll have to see about that. All right. And then the last two tips I have are both from your newsletters and um, or your website. Ooh. So the this first one I'm gonna let you drive with. It's the the long tapping of iOS screenshot preview to immediately share it. Go ahead and uh, 
tell our listeners about all that. Cause that's, a, I love screenshots. Yeah, I, I really like this change Apple did. I think it came in iOS 12, I want to say, maybe yeah. iOS 11. But, you know, when you, you take a screenshot on an iPhone or an iPad, you get a little thumbnail down in the uh, the lower uh, uh, right, I believe. Right. And, you know, usually it just sits there for a couple seconds and then it disappears. You can swipe it away if you immediately want to save it to photos. But if you long press on it mm-hmm. right away... You can um, the share sheet pops up right, right then and there, right. so you don't have to open an app. You don't have to stop what you're doing, go to photos or anything. The share sheet pops up, and all the typical apps that that you can share stuff to, everything you've installed and enabled, are are right there. So you can just share the photo real quick. Right. And uh, I wrote this a little while ago. I want to see if I this was back in it February. In I really, really test, test you. This was back in February. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I want to actually uh, go a step further. I've got an extra tip mm-hmm. after this process. So after you share the photo, the thumbnail is still there. If you tap that thumbnail, it opens this sort of like temporary markup screen where you can you know you can scribble on the photo, you can crop it, you can you can do a few things to it. Mm-hmm. If you tap done, you can delete the screenshot right, right then and there. Right. So now you're not filling photos up with all these you know tens hundreds. Of, of screenshots that you Thousands. don't actually want laying around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you can, you can share it, do whatever you need to do with it. And then you can delete it right then and there without having to, you know, go into photos and clean up stuff later. Awesome. Yep. No, take, take advantage and uh, re- read this article. He wrote up uh, as a tip. It's, it's, it's really awesome. And screenshots are the best. I really, I really like screenshots a lot. So, um, and the last one I had was uh, you, another tip from you. Um, it was about, um, the, uh, messages was it not yes 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 Yes. so this one is um quickly saving multiple photos and videos from messages conversations yeah so this is a panel that i feel like uh probably not not enough people know about but in um in your messages conversations if you go into any conversation you tap the person at the top Mm -hmm. you tap the info button and then you you know you get like send them my current uh, location, you know, mm-hmm. mute this conversation. Right. If you scroll down a little bit, you basically have a, a, a history of all the media that you've shared uh, uh, between between yourself and them. Everything they've sent you, everything you've sent them. Mm-hmm. And so, if you want to, let's say you want to save a few of those photos to um, your photos, or maybe you want to share them to someone else, you can select multiple you can select more than one if you tap and hold on one of them and then the typical like copy delete uh uh Mm -hmm. menu pops up if you tap more now you can select a whole bunch of them just like you know pressing the select button in photos you can just scroll and tap on whatever photos you want and then from there uh you can say save you know it it calls them attachments for me right now but there will be a button to save x number of whatever you've selected Mm -hmm. so it's a great way to get that stuff out of messages if you uh, if you need it. Absolutely. All right, and then uh, we wrap things up, and then I have a couple app picks. Um, and um, we, uh, one I have is uh, I actually found interesting. I just found out about this app today. Actually, it's called Google Primer, and what it is, it's, it allows you to be able to learn a lot of marketing things fast, and it's an easy way to learn new Ooh. business and digital marketing skills. Um, it works offline, so you can take lessons, take lessons on business planning, management, sales, digital advertising, social media. This might be right up your alley, actually, uh, David. Uh, content marketing, SEO, mm. and, and all kinds of other stuff. If you have five minutes free, all you have to do is you go to this app, and it actually goes through. And uh, I started taking the one uh, on on um, social media, and it uh, it just flips through pages, and you can, and just it's really visually really a, a cool app. I was, I was very you know, surprised, of course, of anything with from Google, um, uh, but uh, yeah, I would check this out. It's absolutely free uh, for for learning skills from marketing and business management and selling and you know brand building, all kinds of different stuff of business. It might be something you might be interested in. It's got a lot of good ratings um, on the App Store, so um, I've got a link in the show notes to. Uh, that particular app uh, on 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 the uh, the app stores uh, app. So I don't mean to put you on a spot here, but if you do, if you do if you don't have an uh, app, I, that's okay too. But uh, oh. you have something you came up with. Asking asking me for app recommendations is absolutely not putting me on the spot. All right, good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can I can always recommend an app for you. Um, so one. I don't know if this is a little off the beaten path for for you or your audience, but let's try it. Uh, how do you ever talk about Reddit? 
how familiar are oh, you? Yeah, that's how great. familiar do you go, think your go, audience is? Go for it. Yeah, that's great. So Reddit is, you know, just like the internet or, or the television, Reddit can be a wonderful place and some parts of it can be a terrible place. But <laughs> there, yes, there are lots and lots of wonderful places on, on Reddit, I feel. And some of them are... The whole concept, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, is Reddit is a community of communities. So if you're into looking for cute cat pictures, there are absolutely a few what they call subreddits for them. Subreddits are like forums. Uh, If you're into uh, working on cars, if you're into Apple stuff, there's, there's going to be a subreddit for it. And if there isn't, you can create one. Well, Reddit also supports third party apps. And one of my mm-hmm. favorite apps for browsing Reddit, my, my favorite app really is called Apollo. In fact, it's the only way I, I really use Reddit. Um, Reddit has a website. I've, I've never liked it. Their new design is, is a lot better. But uh, I never used Reddit until I found some of these third-party apps that, uh, that actually make it look better and usable for what I wanted to do. And one of my favorite things about a community like that versus you know following people on Twitter, even somebody like me on Twitter or your favorite news people or whatever is – Subreddits are very moderated to stay on topic. So if you if you like the cute dog pictures subreddit like I do, mm-hmm. you can go there and you absolutely know that that's all you're going to see there. You're not going to see someone ranting about the world being flat or you, you know like like you'll see your favorite uh, 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 news writer you know getting into a, a Twitter fight with somebody or whatever. Yep. All you're going to see there is is cute dog pictures, and I I appreciate that. In, uh, in our modern times. Sure. And so I've been using Reddit more, actually. Um, and you can do a lot with it. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. You can cre- create something called multi-reddits where you collect a whole bunch of subreddits into a stream, kind of like you'd put uh, news feeds into a folder you know, in, in an RSS mm-hmm. reader. Um, so I have like a, a games uh, multi-reddit because I play a lot of video games. And so sure. I can learn about certain video games and systems and stuff like that. So Apollo is a, a great app. It's on the iPhone and the iPad. Yep. Um, the link in the show notes for it. And it looks like it's free, but uh, there's also in-app purchases. Yep. Yep. As as so many uh, apps are these days. So, yeah, you can download it and try it, and then you can get a few extra features. It's made by uh, one individual developer. I'm, I'm so bad with names, so I can't. Christian I don't have Selig? it off the top of my head. Christian, Christian Selleck, there you go. Yeah, I've already got How the link. perceptive of you. <laughs> um, and he's very responsive. Of course, he has his own subreddit for Apollo. He's super responsive. People, you know, post bugs. They post requests. He's in there all the time talking to people. Just a real uh, great developer, great app. Highly recommend yeah, it. I've been meaning to really get into Reddit. I'm not I, I'm not into it as much as I used to be. And, uh, and, and there, there's so much information out there that you can find out uh, that's out there. Um, do you have? Do you subscribe to it, or you use just the free version? Uh, uh, I subscribe to it. Um, I nice. like I like the extra features. I like some of the themes and and icons. Uh, you know, you get a little more customization. One of the really neat things that I I like that he does is uh, he has an update at least once a month, mm-hmm. and each month for the pro subscribers, he introduces a new icon that is commissioned by like an independent artist mm-hmm. in the community, and so. He, he's just got this huge body of icons. How many has he done now? One, two, three, four, ten? I think ten icons now. Hmm. And, you know, just great little renditions of the, the Reddit icon. It's a little robot. You know, it's their, their mascot that people kind of get attached to. And so, uh, yeah, real interactive, constant updates, totally worth the price. Um, and if, you know, if you ever need a session about Reddit, man, I'd, I'd, I could totally sit there down and, and chat with you you could do a show yeah. about it yeah we could do, uh, we could do a show about it probably i should probably talk to mike and uh and barry about maybe doing a talk about it yeah well, well, we could do that we could do that or... now that we're getting down this rabbit hole yeah <laughs> <laughs> no that, i'm always open to do a different open show i mean it's uh but i mean it, it's all involving ios so it's not like it's anything different so we can we can always come up with something later um i they have a lifetime ultra right? is there a difference between ultra and pro so, I forget what the difference is between Ultra and Pro. I mean, um, twenty five bucks, I mean, and it's lifetime. I mean, I think that's pretty fair. Oh, the lifetime. Them. Yeah, I think the other ones are like yearly, and I think they introduced. I've seen more apps doing this actually, yeah. introducing some type of a, a lifetime purchase price because, mm-hmm. of course, there's some people out there that you know they don't want to subscribe, they don't want to pay multiple times. Right. That's a totally different conversation. Um, so I hope. 
I hope that works out because I've been seeing yeah. more apps uh, well, uh, introduce that recently. It looks like it looks like he's updating it pretty frequently. So no, this that's a definitely potential pro- uh, potential topic for you never know. We can talk about that in the future here on, the, on our show. I also linked uh, under your app picks their actual Reddit the official Reddit app, so people can check that out as well if that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but we're going to put in here that you highly recommend the Apollo Reddit app. So. All right. Awesome. But, all right. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show this week, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, why don't you tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and uh, and social media, all that stuff? So I'm I'm around on a few sites. Uh, I do have a Twitter. It's my last name at Chartier. Mm-hmm. I spend a little more time on a different network called Mastodon these days. Yeah. Um, and you can, it's probably easiest to find me at my website. So it's just chartier.land. And I've got everything linked there. I've got my, you know, finer things in tech and the newsletter are linked there. So okay. that's like a nice little touch point if you want to find uh, anything else that I do. All right. I did put a link in uh, under our, about our guests at your toot.cafe, the Mastodon uh, link as well. If that's okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We will have that in the notes as well. All right, let's wrap things up, and uh, that is a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS, or you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. Or better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where you can find all the links to listen to us on there. I am your I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And again, uh, David, thanks for joining me. Thanks a lot. This is this is great. Yeah, this was great. And uh, thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you again soon. <laughs> <laughs>